Thank you and good morning. My name is Louis Marshall. I'm the Director of Microfluidic Engineering at Puritan Biosystems. Uh, and today I'm excited to talk to you about our new kit for the Puritan Ionic, the FFP to Pure RNA Kit. Let me start by telling you who we are. So uh, Puritan Biosystems was founded in 2012 and our mission is to develop revolutionary sample prep solutions to help customers get the most out of every sample. Uh, we know your samples are important. We want to make sure that you get all the information that you can uh, from what may be a very limited sample source. Our core technology was invented by Juan Santiago and his team at Stanford University. Uh, and we're currently headquartered in Pleasanton, California. You can see from the map, uh, we're surrounded by some of the real giants of the biotech industry. Our investors include Five Man Ventures, Agilent Technologies, Roche Venture Fund, and Coda Capital. Puritan uses a different sample preparation technology than traditional sample prep methods. Uh, it's a method called isotachapheresis or ITP. And let me walk you through the difference between those two methods. So traditionally, uh, nucleic acid purification is based on surface adsorption. The nucleic acid is absorbed onto either a silica-based column or a bead, a carboxyl-based bead. And that adsorption takes advantage of the differential solubility of the nucleic acid compared to other components in a raw lysate. The disadvantages of this solution is that by absorbing the nucleic acid onto the surface, you're taking it out of its natural uh, environment in solution. And so that can be, cause the nucleic acid to be damaged uh, by the dehydration process on the surface. You're also at risk of permanently losing the nucleic acid if it doesn't come back off of the surface. Secondly, uh, your downstream uh, eluent is at risk of contamination with the harsh wash solutions that are used to wash other components off of the surface. And lastly, you're at risk of bias. Uh, it's not every nucleic acid is going to bind to that surface in the same way. In contrast, uh, we use ITP, and ITP is a form of electrophoresis. The principle of separation is the charge, and specifically the charge of the nucleic acid on the phosphate backbone. The advantage of this is that we're simply moving the nucleic acid from one solution to another solution, and so we're keeping the nucleic acid in its native environment. That allows us to achieve high yield and high integrity. Uh, we achieve high purity of the nucleic acid because by carefully choosing the electrophoretic components that are in the solution. And overall, we're trying to give you the best representation of what's really in your sample. We're trying to uh, purify all of the nucleic acid based on its common property of the phosphate backbone. The result that we're delivering to you is better data. The way that ITP works, I'll depict you in this slide. So, we load the nucleic acid into a microchannel that's represented by the uh, diagram on the upper left. We sandwich the nucleic acid in the lysate between a cathodic buffer with slow uh, negatively charged ions and a separation buffer that has fast negatively charged leading ions. We then apply an electric field and the nucleic acid moves towards the positive electrode. The other negatively charged ions, leading and trailing ions, also move towards the positive electrode, with the leading ions in front and the trailing ions behind. The nucleic acid starts to form a sharp zone between the leading and trailing ions. It can't be, get ahead of the leading ions because the leading ions are faster, and it can't fall behind the trailing ions because the trailing ions are slower. And so the nucleic acid forms a tight zone that we call the ITP zone. We continue to drive current until the nucleic acid traverses to the extraction reservoir, at which point we turn off the electric field and the nucleic acid can be extracted easily. Puritan has built an instrument around the ITP process, and I want to show you that instrument, the Puritan ionic. Inside the ionic, uh, 
uh, we hold the, the Puritan ship. And that ship contains eight parallel channels, each of which independently purifies an individual sample of nucleic acid. What you're seeing here is real nucleic acid dyed with a fluorescent green dye and run at accelerated speed for demonstration purposes. In the real example, this takes about an hour to run. You can see what's happening, which is that the nucleic acid is being sandwiched between the slow trailing ion in red and the fast leading ion in blue. And you can see the impurities falling behind. We continue to drive the electric field until the nucleic acid reaches the elution well, at which point we shut off the field and the instrument opens allowing you to collect the nucleic acid with pipette. That nucleic acid can then be taken to any downstream analysis that you want to perform. Together, these two components form the Puritan ionic purification system. There are application-specific chips and buffers that provide the best possible performance for each sample type. And these run on the Puritan ionic benchtop system. The system is easy to use, it's fully automated, and it can process eight samples per chip. Uh, we give you six chips or 48 samples per kit. The instrument is compact, it will fit right on your bench top, and it's driven through a touchscreen, which will walk you through each stage of the purification process. The advantages of the Puritan Ionic Purification System are that it provides very simple workflows. There's no bias in the length or GC content of the extracted material, and we always provide you the highest yield and the highest purity for every sample you put through. The pure genetic system will allow you to purify nucleic acid samples in just 60 minutes. You do this in three stages. First, you load the running buffers into the chip and allow the instrument to prime. The instrument will prime for about eight minutes, at which point you can come back and load your lysate uh, eight individual lysates into the system, and then close the system and allow it to run. The system will run the automated purification for about 50 minutes, and at the end you can come back and end the run via the touchscreen and collect your samples via the pipette. You can purify about eight, sample, uh, eight samples in about 60 minutes with less than five minutes hands-on time per sample. As of right now, there are three kits available for the Puritan Ionic. The first two are for purifying nucleic acid from FFPE tissue. There's the FFPE to pure DNA kit, which has been out for about nine months. And then what I'm introducing to you today is the FFPE to pure RNA kit. Together, these two provide a total solution for nucleic acid purification from FFPE samples. In addition, I'll talk about the Cells to Pure DNA Low Input Kit, which allows you to purify DNA from as little as 10 cultured or sorted cells. Pearson has put a major focus on improving the solutions for purifying nucleic acid from FFPE samples. And so I'll talk to you about that now. Why are formalin-fixed paraffin-embedded tissue, or FFPE tissue, samples so important? Uh, the main reason is that they're an incredible time machine of information. You can retrieve samples that are over 20 years old, that may have a complete medical history attached to them, and extract the nucleic acid and analyze it with the latest sequencing technologies. There's also a huge number of samples that have been archived and studied, uh, and even more that are available for study. But the challenge with FFP tissue is that it's hard to work with. The workflows are tedious and time consuming. Uh, depending on how the sample has been stored, you can get unpredictable nucleic acid quality. And the sample prep biases that result from these workflows can impart a bias into the downstream results. And so Pure just started to address this by launching the Ionic FFP to Pure DNA Kit. One of our major focuses with our FFP kits is to make the workflows as simple as possible. If you look at the column-based workflow at the top, uh, you can see it has a huge number of steps. You need to take your sample and 
at the very beginning, start by removing the paraffin because it can interfere with and, and stick to a column. After that, you decross link the sample and uh, lyse it, followed by doing the entire column workflow that you would use for cells, for example. So you bind the nucleic acid to the column, and then you wash it with several wash solutions to wash away proteins and other contaminants. Finally, you elute the nucleic acid from the column, and then you can finally do your downstream analysis. In contrast, uh, with the computer workflow is really simple. Uh, you take your sample directly into a tube. There's no need to trim the wax or remove the paraffin. And then we give you a simple hands-off thermomixer protocol to lyse and decross-link the sample all in one step. You then put the sample directly onto the purigen ionic system. And in about an hour, you get back ready to use DNA. Uh, overall, you spend less than three minutes of hands-on time per sample. And even though our workflow is really simple, uh, we give you back fantastic data. So here's a comparison of qPCR yield between Purigen and the leading column-based competitor. Both kits were used to process samples from 32 different F of P tissue blocks, and all of the samples were eluted in 40 microliter elution volume. We analyzed their yield using the Kaijin MREF multi-copy reference qPCR assay. And so on the x-axis, you can say our indices for each block, their blocks for breast, colon, and lung tissue. And on the y-axis, you can see the concentration that we got out. Purigen recovered more nucleic acid for almost every sample that we put into it. Uh, our typical yield was four times as high as the column kit, and in some cases, it was more than 10x as high. But it's not enough to show simply an improvement in the amount of nucleic acid that we're purifying. Uh, we think it's really important to show how these results translate into next generation sequencing. And before I get into the sequencing data, I want to walk you through how we analyze our sequencing data to bring out the information that we really care about. Uh, our belief is that we need to use a specific method for analyzing our sequencing data because we're not trying to necessarily surface biological differences in the blocks. We're trying to interrogate how differences in the extraction method leads to differences in the sequencing results. And to do that, what we settled on was using a reference for what a good sequencing result would look like. Then we can take F of P material, extract it, and see how variations in the extraction efficiency uh, lead to bias away from the high quality result. The way that we do that is we generate a high quality reference profile for the sequencing library uh, using a high quality DNA source. And then we compare all experimental data to our reference coverage profile. Once we have this reference profile, we then compare it to the experimental profiles by dividing the number of hits for each target for the experimental by the number of hits for a target for the reference. And then we take the log 10 of this ratio. The consequence of that is that if an experimental library has the same number of hits as the reference, we assign it a score of zero. If it's overcovered by a factor of 10, we assign it a score of one. And if it's undercovered by a factor of 10, we assign it a score of minus one. This gives us a score for each target for each library. And so then we can start to compare. We can fully collapse the targets for a single library and look at their dispersion from zero, uh, as shown in the box plots here. Or we can break it down. For example, we can break it down by chromosome as shown in the diagram on the right. And so here's what that data looked like, taking samples through both the ionic system and the column-based competitor. You can see the horizontal line, the dashed line that we have at zero here. And you can see that all of the blue dots for the ionic system are very close to the zero line. In contrast, the orange dots uh, tend to 
disperse away from the zero line. You can see this cluster here uh, for chromosome 11 is undercovered. And you can also see for some chromosomes tailing downward. This repeats across the other chromosomes as well. To figure out why uh, we're getting poor coverage in the column-based kit, uh, we also broke it down by length and GC content. You can see that when you look at target length for the ionic system, uh, there's no bias. It still runs directly across the zero line. But for the column-based kit, once you get above about 100 bases, you start to have under coverage. Uh, and you can see that, that under coverage becomes severe at about 140 bases. Uh, this gives a score of minus 3, which translates to 1,000x under coverage for some of these targets. You can see a similar effect happening with the GC content. Uh, the coverage by GC is still flat for the samples from pure genionic. But from the column kit, you can see a clear over coverage when there's low GC content and under coverage when there's high, high GC content. We want to go a step further and show how this variation in coverage affects the biological calls that are made from this data. And so we went further and looked at variance from repeated sequencing of a single block of tissue. For both the ionic system and the column-based system, uh, we cut sequential five micron sections from the sample. And then we put either one, two, or four five micron sections into each extraction. And then we made libraries from every extraction. What we found is that uh, the coverage results essentially replicated what I showed you on this previous page. Uh, for the ionic system, coverage was ve always very close to the reference and consistent library to library. For the column-based kit, uh, you can see, especially when only one 5-micron section was put in, there was clear uh, under-coverage of many of the targets that are in the library. Uh, in fact, again, we see bias of up to 1,000x for under-coverage. This coverage profile got somewhat better when we put in additional sections to the extraction for the column. But even when we put in four 5-micron sections, uh, we still had significant under coverage for parts of one of the libraries. Below, you can see how this translated into uh, our ability to call variants from these libraries. So overall, we identified 26 variants for this block of tissue. And for four out of the five Puritan libraries, we identified all 26 variants. Uh, for one of the libraries, we identified 25 out of the 26. In contrast, uh, for the column-based kit, we frequently miss variants. Uh, for the uh, uh, extraction from a single 5-micron section, only 21 of the 26 confirmed variants uh, were actually identified. That got somewhat better for the two and four input extractions. But again, when uh, for the library from four 5-micron sections with severe coverage bias, uh, only 23 of the 26 variants were called correctly. And so it shows you that we're really drawing the incorrect biological conclusion when we experience this severe coverage bias uh, due to the column-based kit. Now let me show, show you our new product, the Ionic FFP to Pure RNA Kit. Uh, this is a kit that gives you both messenger RNA and microRNA in a single, simple workflow. Let's start by looking at the workflow comparison again. The column-based workflow is very similar to what we saw in the DNA case. You start with paraffin removal, followed by lysis, and in this case, you perform DNA treatment to remove the DNA and keep the RNA. After that, you bind the nucleic acid to the column, and again, you wash through several times, centrifuging each time, to remove unwanted contaminants from the column. When you're finished washing, you dry the column and then add water to elute the RNA. The column-based workflows encourage you to do separate uh, purifications for the RNA uh, and microRNA fractions. And it ends up being about 33 steps per sample total. In contrast, for the Puritan workflow, uh, 
we do ask you to remove the paraffin, but this time we ask you to do it simply by adding both your mineral oil and your license buffer to your sample tube, and again, incubating on the thermomixer. Once you're done with that, you recover your aqueous layer, you add an additional buffer to it, and you add your DNA stream. You perform the purification on the automa automated Puregen ionic system, and then you collect your total RNA. And we give you both the messenger RNA and the microRNA, uh, and this time in only 16 step steps, for example. This leads to a really substantial time savings when using the Puregen ionic system. As always, we're always striving to give you the highest possible yield from these samples. And you can see we've done that here. You can see that we've assessed the yield that we got from 16 individual FOP blocks. And we outperform the column-based kit on 15 out of the 16 blocks. You can see that we've covered breast, colon, liver, lung, and brain tissue. And we're also assessing samples from a variety of different tissue extraction processes, surgical biopsies, core needle biopsies, fine needle aspirates, and samples that are recovered from autopsies. We also assess the quality of the RNA that was recovered by using the DB200 scoring method, which is to say we ran each of the samples on a tape station, and then we assessed what fraction of the recovered RNA is greater than 200 nucleotides in length. You can see that we match up well with what was recovered from the RNA column kit. We're not biasing the quality of the RNA coming out of the system by our extraction method. In addition to getting high yield, it's critical that the, our RNA kit is reproducing the ex correct expression profiles for RNA. And so we assess that in a couple of different ways. Let me start by showing you the data from the NanoString Pan Cancer Pathways Panel. Here we have counts of individual targets across two replicates from the same FOP block. Replicate one is on the y axis, and replicate two is on the x axis. Each of the data points represents an individual target that was measured in both of the replicates. What you can see is that the expression pattern was extremely reproducible because there's a strong correlation expression between the two uh, replicates from the same block. The Pearson correlation for the uh, two replicates is 0 0.099, which shows that they're nearly identical to one another. Once we established that we were providing reproducible expression patterns, we then compare the expression patterns to the leading RNA column kit. And you can see that the same thing is happening here. Now the ionic system is on the x-axis, the RNA column kit is on the y-axis, and we're still getting essentially the same expression pattern from the two kits. Again, with a Pearson correlation of 0.99. What this tells us is that we're getting the same expression pattern that you would expect from an RNA column kit. We also validated that this carries over to sequencing. Here I'm showing you the results from the Amblyseq Illumina Immune Response Panel for three different blocks of tissue, one from breast, one from colon, and one from lung. Again, we're showing the number of hits for each of the different targets in the panel with the ionic system on the x-axis and the RNA column kit on the y-axis. And what you can see is that we're able to easily replicate the same expression pattern uh, as the column kit across all three of these tissues. And so what that tells you is that we're reproducing the correct RNA expression pattern but with a much simpler workflow and higher yields. In addition to providing excellent mRNA results, our new kit also provides excellent access to the microRNA that's in your samples. And this is because the Puritan system is inherently unbiased 
towards the length of the nucleic acid that's being extracted. And so it extracts microRNA just as easily as it extracts mRNA. We started by assessing the microRNA concentrations using a microRNA qPCR assay. We assayed for two targets, MIR16 and MIR21. And we did this across multiple different samples for breast, colon, lung, and brain tissue. In this case, because we know that the leading mRNA column kit is not rated to extract microRNA, we changed our comparison to use the leading microRNA column kit. What you can see is that we easily exceeded the yield from the microRNA column kit. And indeed, the column kit often struggled to extract microRNA from several of the samples. You can see that from this breast sample and this lung sample, uh, extraction was just very poor. More than anything though, we found that the miRNA column kit was just not that reliable. You can see for colon sample one here, while there were two replicates that essentially uh, matched the result from the purition kit, there were four additional samples that were low by an order of magnitude uh, for reasons that are not clear. We also checked that the microRNA expression pattern was both reproducible and matched the expected pattern. Here you can see the reproducibility chart, again with replicate one on the y-axis, replicate two on the x-axis, and you can see that we again got a reproducible result with a Pearson correlation of 0.98. And this is now using the nanostring miRNA expression analysis panel. Again, once we established reproducibility, we then compared to the microRNA column kit using the same nanostring panel and achieved a correlation, Pearson correlation coefficient of 0.95, still quite a strong correlation. Now let me switch gears and talk about the ionic cells to pure DNA low input kit. This kit allows you to purify DNA from as few as 10 sorted or cultured cells. Let's we'll start by looking at the yield. Uh, we assess the yield for this kit for three cell lines, COLO320, GM24385, and H2228 and we compared it to the leading column base kit. We ran samples at 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, and 100,000 cells. And you can see that we exceeded the yield for the column kit at every cell density and at every cell line. Typically, we exceeded the yield of the column base kit by a factor of 1.5x to 2x. In addition to having superior yield, we also produced higher fragment sizes. On the x-axis of this graph is the size of the DNA fragments in kilobase pairs. And on the y-axis is the percentage of the nucleic acid that is greater than that size. For the column-based system, the median fragment size, denoted by where the orange line crosses the 50% line, it's about 18 kilobases. Whereas for the ionic base system, the median fragment size was about 40 kilobases. You can see the same thing by looking directly at the fragment analysis traces. For the ionic system, you can see that we repeatedly produced bands that were about 40 kilobases in size with very little nucleic acid below that. We compare that with an automated column-based system this time, and you can see that often the nucleic acid was smeared down, fragmented and smeared down into the hundreds of bases. This difference is also reflected in the DNA integrity numbers, with the ionic system typically coming in at seven or above, while the column-based system was typically in the five to six range, and one sample was as low as 2.7.
And we wrap up by talking about our future applications. We currently have three applications available. We have FOP kits for DNA and for RNA, and we can purify DNA from sorted or cultured cells. Right now, the kits we have in development would expand our cultured and sorted cell work to DNA and RNA and expand the upper range to 5 million cells. We are also working to expand our work with tissue to include fresh and frozen tissue. And if you're interested in any of these kits that are currently in development, uh, please contact us and ask about our early access program uh, to get more information about them. In the future, we'll be looking at other application areas, including plasma, serum, and whole blood, buccal swabs and saliva, and we'll be looking to further improve our long fragment length to 50 kilobases and above to help provide input to long read sequencing. We can also perform DNA separations to do things like next generation sequencing size cleanup, and we can do additional work with pre-purified samples. If you have other samples that you're struggling with, please also reach out to us and let us know the types of challenges that you're facing. Let me summarize what we've talked about today. At Pyrogen, we're always working to redefine the nucleic acid sample preparation experience. We're extracting pure native DNA and RNA, and that includes mRNA and microRNA. We're working really hard to provide the simplest possible workflows with as much automation as possible on the Pyrogen Ionic system. And we're also working to enable next generation sequencing from samples that are of lower quality and lower input amounts. You can learn more about us at our website or at the links below. Thank you for your time, and let me turn it back over to Elizabeth.